Berkeley shouted. Nobody spoke, so he shouted all the louder. It's a virus trick that's true. I can lick them, make it through. The overhauls and Mrs. Murphy's chowder. I'm thinking the guy that wrote that song had a little green beer before he wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's 837 at WHO. It's St. Patty's Day, Monday, March 17th. And yeah, the parade gets underway about uh, noon today down to the staging area of 15th and Martin Luther King. That's what this program needs, a staging a area. staging area. <laughs> yeah. We need a green room. Yeah, oh. there you go. Especially today. You bet. Every once in a while, it is our honor to do our Van and Bonnie Hall of Heroes, where we induct somebody into uh, the Hall of Heroes that has done something or some things noteworthy. And we were so fortunate to have Jack Lazier, our friend from the Iowa Hall of Pride, say we would like to sponsor that. And so you have, and here you are. Here we are. Good here to have you here. We find a, a, a new hero a, a gem every time. all the time, don't we? You know, I'm surprised you aren't exhausted after what you went through the last four weeks. I am. I almost didn't come today. Is that <laughs> right? <laughs> but, you know, it's 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 sort of exhilarating and it, not sort of. It is really this going to seem weird this week to not have a state tournament? No, because we we start out with field trips. Oh, you know, field yes. trips. Yes. I have to share one thing. You know, I always like to do something new and I got this note from a little girl Anna on Friday and it says dear Hall of Pride sorry for chipping some paint on your wall I really feel bad about this here is a dollar to paint it oh my Aww. gosh isn't that something Aww. wow isn't that cool that's very cute Aww. and I think one of the things Bernie There's always, a budding hero right there. <laughs> That's right. Bernie always says when he comes back, and he goes back from Arizona, this is Bernie Sago, the visionary. He said, I love to go in the bathrooms at the Iowa Hall of Pride because after nine years, they are as pristine today as they were. He's right. And he is, yeah. It's just a, a pride factor. And so I just thought that no was really touching. Well, as, as long as we're on the topic, tell what it is and who it's for. Well... The Hall of Pride is for all Iowans to feel better about ourselves, to, to sort of get this feeling that Iowa's a special place. And we have all of these kids, field trips and with parents and tournament times that come in and, and, and see all of these heroes like we're interviewing today, somebody that's special. And it's in all walks of life, whether they're musicians or athletes or, or actors and actresses or, or heroes like Sal Junta, you know, a Medal of Honor winner. So. This is really appropriate today that we are honoring this individual. Yeah. Well, and, and you're open all the time pretty much, aren't you? It feels like I'm there all the time. <laughs> yes. We're open. We had, actually had extended hours during the tournaments, but our, our regular times are 9.30 to 4.30 Monday through Saturday. Well, and we said the same thing every time. The people that uh, we honor always say, well, I'm no hero. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do or what anybody else would do. That's why we love them, isn't it? Yeah, that's, it's, I mean, it's there's great. a humbleness there. Yeah, that's right. And ladies and gentlemen, no stranger to our WHO radio microphone, Carlos Kirby, but in a little different uh, meaning here in setting today. Hi, Carlos. Good morning, Van. How are you? I'm fine, and you He's said you're fine. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm getting it back. Have you been cheering at the ball games so, or something? Uh, no, I, I got cold in the last week. Uh. And strange part was the cold left and my voice went with it. <laughs> he told me he was in in um, Las Vegas, but he couldn't tell me what he was doing. <laughs> Carlos Kirby has done so many things for so many people. And we've been able to witness that. I mean, right now you're a firefighter. Yes. You've been in the Navy. Yes. He's still in the Navy. He's still in the Navy. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? I mean, you could get called upon to... I could. And uh -huh. yeah, in fact, I serve in a unit that has a, a 72 hour notice before I have to deploy. So we do uh, different things like the uh, disaster that was in the Philippines. Um, I was the next person to be able to go. So my mm -hmm. wife was glad to know that uh, I was runner up in that one. <laughs> <laughs> You've spoken at a lot of places, you've been uh, very inspirational to a lot of kids. He's you an work, Olympian? not only have you been an Olympian, you were on the Olympic Committee for a while. Yeah, for about 10 years. So trying to make it better for the athletes that were coming up. And, uh, you know, one of the things I pride myself with is 
using that opportunity to give women's bobsledding uh, as, yeah. a, as an Olympic sport. So that's one of the things that, that will always be a pearl in my pocket uh, as you get to watch people like Romeo Jones compete. So. Tell about the time when you were younger and you wanted to be a bobsledder and what you did in Des Moines, Iowa, of all places, to practice. Yeah, I, I never heard of Lola trying this technique. They must have gotten a little better with what they have. But uh, when I had first uh, tried out, when I had first, uh, you know, approached the people in Lake Placid and was trying out for the team, like, you know, you've got you know, pretty good talent, but you know, you've really got to practice. There's nothing near you. So, you know, they came up with an idea that, why don't I get a grocery cart, fill it with as much stuff as I can, get it as heavy as I can, and just practice pushing that. I mean, you had down block, concrete blocks and I did, bricks. Yeah, yeah, old weights and yeah, I mean, just bricks and everything I could get to put in there. Yeah, neighbor kids, you know, <laughs> anybody, yeah, you want to ride them. Did you ask them if they wanted to be Yeah, in yeah, I did. Yeah, well, they'd come out and kind of watch, so I figured, well, let's include these guys in here. So I'm not man. Going that's not an easy thing to do so, to get on an Olympic team. No, it, it wasn't. And I tell you, that's, that's one of the things that I think when I made my first team, that was when I really knew there are things that you can achieve in this world and you really just have to, to be, be willing to work hard and uh, and try. You might not make everything that you set out to do, but one, you won't know unless you try. But and you know, two, you'll surprise yourself just how many things you can achieve. There was some creativity there too, because who in the world in Des Moines, Iowa, ever thought of doing that before? No, yeah. So uh, it just, but you know, it was something I fell in love with as a kid that I saw the sport of bobsledding, and I thought, you know, after I got out of high school, and I was pretty highly recruited um, to do sports in high school, and I thought. Why not try this, you know, and see if I can give it a shot? Sure. You know, just like the people who want to become astronauts or anything that you do, you know, you, you get that seed planted in your head and you decide, you know, I'd, I'd like to try that and it just went from there. Carlos has done a lot of that in his life. He decided he wanted to be in the Navy, he's a naval officer. Exactly. He decided he wanted to be a firefighter, he's a firefighter. Yep. You also, you uh, volunteer with Special Olympics and do. You, you do a lot of things in the community. Well, I just try to give back. I mean, it's it's my home, and uh, I think if you don't take the time um, to, to at least use the skills, and I, you guys do that as well. I mean, you know, it's one of the things I love about your show. You know, use the, the platform that you have to make your community a better place and your state a better place and thus our country a better place. And, you know, the kids in this state are going to be the future of this state. And so um, a lot of times people don't necessarily tell them how much they appreciate them or how much they value them and, and I think it's it's good to be able to talk with kids and let them realize that they have special talents. They may not know what that talent is yet, yeah. but you know, to believe in themselves and work hard and, and they'll be surprised at whatever they'll be able to do and every last one of them at every school I go to, every one of those kids can do something better than, than anybody else. They just may not know what it is yeah. yet and they just need to be willing to work hard. And, and achieve the goals that they set for themselves and make good decisions along that path. Now, Carlos, there was one thing recently, and you alluded to it, that I found, I told Bernie, that's no coincidence, that <laughs> Lolo Jones thing. I mean, here she is from Iowa, and Carlos Kirby was a, was a bobsledder, and all of a sudden she decides she's going to go into bobsledding. I find that to be beyond coincidence. And Bonnie said, oh, no, I talked no, to Carlos. Carlos said he had no, nothing no, to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with She it. never talked to you at no, all about no, that? No, not directly, no. Is yeah. that right? Now, I, I will say as well, you know, the coaches, all of her coaches are guys that I compete with and they're friends ah. and I still communicate with them. So, you know, there have been different kind of communications that way, but really, no, this was huh. just her, her dream of something on the big podium. And, yeah, <laughs> so... Good for her. Yeah, yeah. Now, I hope she, it's one of those things sometimes when you're in a group of people and like, how are we going to get downtown? And you say, let's take a cab. And everybody's like, how are we going to get downtown? And somebody else says, let's take a cab. And everyone's like, great idea. So I hope maybe it just kind of came in through osmosis in her mind. Yeah. That, uh, where's well, she's a competitor. She, she wants is. to compete. Yeah, she does. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it's a great sport. And, you know, now that she's done, she's bit by the bug and just loves it. So. Well, I got a, I got a hunch that she knew all about you. And she knew, I mean, you gave that sport such publicity in Des Moines and in Iowa. She had to have heard about that, and I'll bet that ran through her mind. Well, I hope so, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to take anything away from her. Oh, she's no. pretty outstanding, yeah. and so, uh, and she's made us all proud, I think, with you know, like, the accomplishments she's made, you know, through that path. 
we should have a Des Moines bobsled team like the Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We could be there good, you go. we? <laughs> we have a little something for you, and I'm going to have Bonnie just read it right off the uh, award here, Carlos. Hey, right, Carlos, it's Van and Bonnie in the Iowa Hall of Pride 2014 Hall of Heroes inductee presented to Carlos Kirby. Thank you for serving Iowa. Well, Congratulations, you much. Carlos. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're always welcome here, except on a permanent basis. Well, yeah. I get on the other side of the table. But, uh, yeah. That's still a good looking chair over there. It always has been. Jack, thank you so much for what you and the Hall of Pride do. Thank you. Always it's good always to have you here. It's a pleasure, and, it, and as I was listening to him talk, I'm thinking, that's exactly what the Hall of Pride is all about, all making kids realize they've got gifts. Inspiration. And, and inspiring them, yes. Absolutely. You bet. All right, it's 847 at WHO.